enter a completely different world, the world of the Kopec system. It started as a joke nearly 30 years ago, aimed at those mechanical Sicilian Dragon and Najdorf players. I found that many of my young peers would memorize the first 15 or 20 moves to get good positions or even won games. It was more than an attempt to be original. The Kopec system was a practical decision. I simply don't believe that a chess game should start after 15 to 20 automatic moves. My early experiences before the Kopec system had threatened my enjoyment of chess because I would always have to worry about which theoretical gem would be sprung on me next and I was struggling to survive as white. However, after many years against players of all strengths and well over a hundred games, I can now say that I have gained some valuable experience and insight into the subtleties of the Kopec system. In a sense, I have become booked on the Kopec system, and there is nothing more enjoyable in chess than to develop your own book lines. And now I would like to share some of that experience with you. After e4, c5, I introduce the Kopec system with two knight f3, and now black may choose from two d6, two e6, or two knight c6, and on any of these, I will play three bishop to d3. And I believe that this is a sound move because it develops a piece, it controls the center, and it prepares to castle. However, the bishop on d3 blocks the d-pawn on d2. And there's a rule in chess which says never block your central pawns with your minor pieces. So what is the bishop doing on d3? Well, it's not going to stay there very long. White will later play c3 and then bishop to c2. And this is the main difference between the Kopec system and the king's Indian attack. White's bishop lives on c2, sometimes behind its d-pawn on d3, and often it will come out on a4 or b3, or the bishop may find activity on the b1 h7 diagonal, which may open up at any time. I believe that the bishop on c2 is better placed than the bishop on g2 and has more prospects for participating in the game from the a4, b3, or b1, h7 diagonals where it may exist. You may note that it requires white to play three moves to get the bishop to c2, that is, bishop to d3, bishop to c2 after c3, and only two moves to get the bishop to g2, the pawn move g3 and bishop to g2. But the pawn on c3 serves another purpose in that it supports White's central buildup with d4 later on. While I don't believe that the pawn on g3 helps White's position in any general way except to enable him to fianchetto his king's bishop. The Kopec system has brought me a lot of experience in positional struggles, tactical melees, swashbuckling attacks and end games but maybe the following gamelet which represents my shortest win with the system sets the tone in the best fashion black plays d6 and white of course initiates the kopec system with bishop to d3 now black answered with knight f6 
and I played c3. Now black played knight c6, which is a move you can't argue with. Here I played bishop c2. The alternative was to play castles, and Mr. Richard Sauvé at the Carnival de Quebec in Quebec City played e5. And now I played h3 in order to prevent bishop g4 and make the move d2 to d4 feasible for white, as is common in the Roy Lopez. That is one of the features of the Kopec system. It takes the Sicilian book player into Roy Lopez-type positions in which he or she may not be as comfortable. Black plays g6 to prepare Fianchetto of the king's bishop. I played d4, achieving the large center. Black played bishop to g7. And now I took the opportunity to force black to move his king and lose his castling privileges. By capturing on c5, black recaptures, d takes c5, queen takes d8, check. And now, because the knight on c6 must keep in touch with his pawn on e5, black must take back with the king and lose his castling privileges. White continues with a sly move, knight to a3. This enables future possibilities for the knight to advance to b5 or to c4 with pressure on black's e5 pawn, while white's bishop on c1 is still free to develop and controls squares on the c1 h6 diagonal. Play continues. King e7, and now knight to c4, pressuring the pawn on e5 by attacking it twice. Black may already be required to play knight to d7 in this position. Instead, black played the questionable knight h5. And would you believe the game is just about to end? Yes, that Kopec bishop is going to spring to life. And can you see where? Bishop to a4. Suddenly, the knight on c6 is attacked, threatening to double and isolate black c pawns after bishop takes c6, b takes c6, and black's pawns would be hopeless. While, at the same time, white has a double attack on the e5 pawn. So, black plays f6, the only move to defend his pawn, and white simply replies bishop to e3, leaving black without any defense of his pawn on c5, which is attacked with check. So black, a gentleman, resigned. Of course, b6 loses a piece to the Kopec bishop, which simply captures the knight on c6. Well, this game was short and sweet. Now let me take you into the world of adventure and struggle which I have faced using this system. This video will be presented according to the pawn structures which black may choose in response to the Kopec system, and not according to any precise sequence of opening moves. First I'm going to look at structures which we might call the dragon structure, involving g6 and d6 for black. Then we're going to look at structures where black plays 
d6, e5, and g6, which we might call the Russian structure because I noticed that many Russian players choose this structure against non-standard white choices against the Sicilian defense. The th third structure we will look at might be called the Lopez structure, where black plays e5 without g6. The fourth structure we'll look at could be called the French structure, where black plays e6 and d5 in answer to the Kopec system. And finally, we'll look at hybrid structures where black may play other combinations of pawn moves. The first structure which we will discuss is called the dragon setup by black. It is the structure of choice by many players who have never seen or heard of the Kopec system. And I am very happy to meet it even today. Now I would like to run through a survey of examples of the kinds of games that the dragon structure leads to. My first example is against Anastasiadis and was played in the Greater New York Open in 1973. Play continued. Knight c6, c3, g6, bishop c2, bishop g7, castles, black plays knight to f6, and now white plays d3. This was before I had learned that if I want to play d4, I should simply play h3, and then I can play d4 quickly against this setup. But here, d4 can be met with bishop to g4. So I play d3 and will prepare d4 slowly. Castles by black, rook e1, just as in the Roy Lopez, and b5, a very common attempt for counterplay by black against white's pawn on c3, and in the long-term hope of opening up the bishop on g7, which is to breathe fire down the a1, h8 diagonal. Knight b d2, back to the Roy Lopez methods with knight f1 to e3 or knight f1 to g3 to follow. Now black played, knight to e8. This is part of a longer maneuver, which is to move the knight to c7 later, coupled with rook to b8, then b4 by black, and knight to b5, where black will have tremendous pressure on the c3 and d4 squares. White continues with his Roy Lopez maneuver, knight to f1. Black plays knight to c7. White plays bishop to e3 to support the d4 pawn break. Black plays bishop to g4 to get rid of the knight on f3, so white will have less control of d4 when white recaptures with the queen on f3. White forces the bishop to make a decision. Bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, and black continues with his onslaught on c3 with b4. And now white finds the peekaboo bishop maneuver, bishop to a4, and the Kopec bishop springs back to life. This is both necessary and good. Knight to e5, queen to e2, rook to b8, which black could have played earlier. And now white plays d4, achieving the strong central duo with pawns on d4 
and e4, which he has been striving for, and white has the advantage of the two bishops as well. Black retreated with knight d7, and white finished his development with rook a d1, with excellent prospects in the middle game. In addition to his strong central pawn duo, white has completed his development, centralized his rooks, and has the two bishops. Later, the bishop on a4, the Kopec bishop, will return to b3 with threats on the a2, g8 diagonal. Here is another game from the same position where black was Calvin Blocker, a talented future IM in 1973. Blocker continued with knight h5 instead of Anastasiadis's knight e8, and the idea is the same, to clear the bishop on the a1 h8 diagonal for black, possibly also to move the knight later to f4, where it will have an influence on white's king side if it can be supported with a pawn. Play continues, knight to f1, b4. And again, black is making an onslaught on white's c3 square, and white cannot play d4 because of bishop to g4, which would provide a very unpleasant pin for black and essentially destroy white's center. So white finds what else? The Kopec bishop, bishop to a4, counterpunching, queen to c7, and now white finds another way to indirectly defend his pawn on c3 while improving his position with knight to e3. Now, if black plays b takes c3, b takes c3 by white, and then bishop takes c3 question mark, white has knight to d5, forking the queen and bishop, and winning. In addition, the advantages of knight to e3 are that the knight prevents the pin by the black bishop to g4, and the knight threatens to move to d5, attacking the black queen, and then if, let's say, the black queen moves to b7, where it must defend the knight on c6, white then would play bishop takes c6, black recaptures, queen takes c6, and white can then win the black queen with knight takes e7 check, forking the king and queen. So blocker responded with e6, preventing knight to d5, and I followed now with my plan of effecting d4, bishop to b7, knight to g4, white tries to invade on the dark squares on the king side with the knight and bishop which guard and attack the h6 square. Knight f6, knight h6, check. King h8. From here, white would like to build on his central control and kingside infiltration with an attack on the black king. <laughs> 